Hello everybody, how y'all doing today? God is a good God. He is a wonderful God. He is a way maker because he is the way. He's the only way. To God be the glory. I just wanted to come on here real quickly, do a quick scripture. And as well as, while we're doing the scripture, I wanted to give everybody a little hindsight, understanding. Look, I want to show y'all where I'm at. I'm in a very, very nice place nowadays, to God be the glory. I mean, uh, honestly, I still work like crazy to get it. Okay, I li literally work 16 hours a day for the past, what, it'll be about four days now. But to God be the glory, he gave me the job, he gave me the ability to do the job, and he gave me the will to uh, go forward in the job. Uh, so I just wanted to go ahead and take a moment and let everybody know uh, when I was going through hard times, when I was going through my hardest and my trials and everything, and I, I used to get mad and I'm wondering why, why, why does, uh, hard times even occur? Why does bad things happen? Or as I suspected it to be a bad thing, I claimed it to be a bad thing, not understanding and realizing it is actually what made me. It is actually what gave me the, the, the will and the drive to get to where I'm at consistency, the persistence, you know, uh, the without ceaseness. And this is all from God himself. It is God and his wisdom that will give us the ability to literally make it in places that we never suspected we would make it. And honestly, all in all, you know, uh, I'm still broke. <laughs> But I'm living a rich life. And that is all to God be the glory. Every single bit of my funds, it goes into my, into my living. But I'll, and into the ministry. But I want y'all to understand that in the moment that we are going through times, we, we're feeling sorrowful, we're feeling hurt, we're feeling angry. But not realizing that God is building us. He's molding us. He's molding us into this strong person that we ought to be for his kingdom. And one thing, understand that no matter how many times you may fall, trust me, you're, you're probably going to fall. I'm not claiming it for you, but no matter how many times you fall, understand, keep the faith. Keep the faith. God will draw you back. God will give you the word. He'll give you a guilty conscience for your wrongdoings. You know? And you'll want to do right. You'll want to do better for him. You'll want to be pleasing to him. You know, He's our father. He's our daddy. He's our everything. We look up to him. We want to be just like him. In mind, in speech, in action, the way we walk, the way we dress. And we want to make sure that uh, we, we do the best of our abilities that he's given us to do so because we want to please him so much. So let's get into the word now. Most heavenly precious Father God, we glorify you and thank you, Father God. Oh, hold on. Most heavenly precious Father God, we thank you. We praise you and we magnify you that you blessed us this day, Father God. We understand all the problems and the scenarios that we go through, Father God, is only an emoting time for us to grow. Father God, we ask that it doesn't bear a burden so much that it'll keep us from you or even cause us to run away from the kingdom that is given, Father God, but it, that we become sustained in that weary moment, Father God, with your love and joy, that we become more confident as we grow in your word, Father God, that we continue to be able to spread the love and joy that you have given us with the sprinkling of our character toward one another, Father God. Father God, I ask that you bless this word this day, not only that we may understand it by your wisdom, but by your wisdom, Father God, that we may do it. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
So today, God has literally brought me here. And this is Job, Job chapter 10. He says, My soul is weary of my life. I will leave. He says, My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou condemnest me with me, uh, contendest with me. It is good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked. Uh, now, this is the stuff that he's complaining within his soul. Okay, he's not speaking aloud. He's not uh, y yelling it at God at all. But he's feeling this way. These are his feelings. He's speaking within his soul. He says, my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou condemnest me. He says, why are you condemning me? Uh, it is good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked. <clears throat> and so he's speaking these words in his soul, and saying, you know, it, it, it's good for you to oppress somebody. Uh, it's good for you to shine upon the wicked. You know, as if he's giving them glory. But these are words he's saying in the flesh, honestly. Hast thou eyes of flesh? Or seest thou a man see it, as a man see it? Are thy days as the days of man? Are thy years as man's days? That thou, that thou inquirest after mine iniquity, and searchest after my sin. Thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Thine hands have made me and fashioned me together round about, yet thou dost destroy me. And he's saying within his soul, why, God, why, why are you destroying me? Why are you oppressing me? Why are you shining your glory upon the wicked instead of upon your creation? Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as thy as the clay, and wilt thou bring me into dust again? He's saying, Are you gonna destroy me? Are you gonna go as far as destroying me? Thou hast thou not poured me out as milk and cur curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh. And hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Thou hast granted me life and favor. And thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. And these things hast thou hid in thy heart. I know that this is with thee. If I sin, then thou markest me. And thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. He said, you will hold me accountable as well. He said, if I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me. He says, and you won't give up on me. No, thou wilt not acquit. Thou, that means quit from mine iniquity. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, Yep. Forgive me, everybody. I'm okay. Let's go back in fourteen. He says, "If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will not will I not lift up mine head? I'm full of confusion. Therefore, seest thou mine affliction." So all this stuff he stated within his confusion, in his confusing state, because he's feeling as if maybe God is against him in this moment. Not realize, but yet at the same time, with, with the understanding 
of knowing that God is molding him as well. He's groaning and moaning things that shouldn't be uttered. For it increaseth, thou, ha thou huntest me as a fierce lion. And again, thou shewest thyself marvelous upon me. He said, but you, you continue to uh, seek after me. And you show yourself all these wonderful works in me, through me. And for me. Thou renewest thy witness against me. And increasest thine indignation upon me. Changes and wars are against me. And so in our modern state. When we first come in to the word. The word is fighting against that sin within us. And as he's molding us. And he's purging it out and giving us a purified way of life we feel like we are at war when it is actually God within the spirit warring against the sin within our flesh yet at the same time he cast away our iniquities as far as the east from the west but the same thing is as he cast those iniquities away he shined upon us this word that we may replace those iniquities with his righteousness. Wherefore then thou wherefore then hast thou brought me up forth out of thy womb? Oh that I had given up the ghost, and no eye had seen me. I should have ha I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the wound to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease then, and let me alone, that I, that I may take comfort a little before I go once I shall not return, even to the land of the darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father God, I ask that you bless everybody that has stuck around and listened to the word that you have spoken through me. I ask that you bless them with it, Father God. That you increase them with it as well as me and my family. Father God, I ask that you remind them in the moments that it's needed to be used. And be the will within them that they may use. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your blessed name. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. God bless you all. I love you. I know for a fact that God loves you. Let's pray to be to God that we can love each other as much if not more than he has loved us. I know it's so easy to make reason why we can't or give ourselves a way of doubting that God is with us, that he will do it for us as if it is us. But we can, and he will, and he already has. He says, Jesus Christ, he said, you will not only do the same works as I have done, but even greater works than these, because I have gone unto the Father. So our Father God is doing great works within you. He has blessed you, and he is Killed you in Jesus name Whatever is wrong right now Within your heart Physical, mental Or spiritual I claim healing upon you In Jesus mighty name In Jesus mighty name we pray Amen, Amen. Hallelujah Hallelujah 
Amen. Amen.